Hi, I'm Jim Stevens from Softion. In this week's Logistics Insights podcast, we'll take a look at the foundational WMS capability of directed put-away. We'll be back to offer some insight on this important topic in just a few seconds. This podcast is brought to you by Softion, providing innovative solutions for warehouse management, warehouse execution, and distributed order management. Softion, delivering supply chain success every time. One of the core concepts relative to warehouse management systems is that of directed put-away. While many logistics professionals are very familiar with this topic, it is clear from conversations with many companies that others don't really have all the details and that quite a few lack directed put-away capabilities with the system they're currently using to run their distribution center. As the name suggests, directed put-away is all about the WMS communicating to DC associates through a mobile wireless terminal where in the DC a product should be stored at the specific location level. But to understand directed put-away, you also need to add the related concept of zoning or zone management. A good WMS should allow you to define, practically without limit, different put-away zones for which rules will be applied relative to put-away. A zone is simply a grouping of locations. A common and most basic approach to zoning is to create separate zones for fast, medium, and slow-moving products. Fast products stored near the front, slow movers in the back. If a fast-moving product is received or created, the WMS should be able to direct the operator to put that product away in a specific location in the fast-moving zone. Ah, but what if there is no available open location in the preferred put-away zone? A good WMS will allow you to define a hierarchical set of rules or preferences to address this scenario. For example, if there is no available location in the fast moving zone, it looks next for location in the medium mover zone, etc. We'll note in general the logic is a lot more complex than that, using more zone types. For example, a 3PL could have zones for each client, and also have velocity based zones within that client block. Or a company within velocity based zones could create a zone for heavy pallets, as defined in the item master on the first or first and second levels of racking for obvious reasons. There are several other important points. First, all put-away transactions, of course, are confirmed with barcode scans. Also, most companies allow associates to override the location recommended by the WMS, but to do so would require entering a reason code, such as location not empty or spillage. The WMS should then provide reports to see if some associates seem to override the WMS recommendation a lot more than others. Also, some products should be able to be configured so that there are no acceptable locations available. A supervisor must be notified to resolve the situation. A common example of that would be hazmat material that must be stored in a specific zone. Finally. If you're putting away products at the case level instead of or in addition to pallet loads, it can add some complexities. For example, if a storage location is only partially full, can you mix in the new receipts to avoid taking up another location? However, that can involve questions about mixing lots or maintaining rules about first in, first out. Directed put away. It's a key part of the value of an advanced WMS and a lot better than associates making their own put-away decisions based on loose rules of thumb. You can find out more about advanced WMS capabilities at softion.com. For Softion, this is Jim Stevens. Thanks for listening.